an investigation you'll see only on 12. In October, you'll remember an off-duty Alaska Airlines pilot was arrested after allegedly trying to shut down the engines of a flight. Court documents state that Joseph Emerson told investigators he had ingested magic mushrooms just a couple of days prior to the flight and was still feeling the effects. After watching our coverage of that story, one of our viewers decided to file a report with the FAA about another Alaska Airlines pilot who he alleged was also taking magic mushrooms. The FAA started an investigation, but it wasn't until he reached out to Alaska Airlines three weeks later that the pilot was grounded. Fox was investigative reporter Ezra Kaplan dug into this story. He's here to share what he found. Ezra. The FAA is responsible for the safety of America's airspace, regulating everything from air traffic controllers to pre-flight safety briefings. Their hotline serves as a single avenue for industry complaints, whether it's from insiders or the public. When the FAA gets a tip from the hotline, it's their job to investigate and determine if action needs to be taken. Since the FAA issues medical certifications, they are also able to revoke them. But what happens when a federal bureaucracy gets in the way of addressing an urgent safety complaint? For weeks, Matthew Lenkins worried that the FAA wasn't taking his warnings seriously. We know in aviation that's how accidents happen. Lenkins had taken the extraordinary step of blowing the whistle not just on a fellow pilot, but on a close personal friend. I went on and filled out the hotline complaint uh, reporting a pilot um, who I had personal knowledge uh, was using substances that were banned for medical purposes by the FAA, such as psilocybin mushrooms. There had been an issue of contacting me, talking about doctor shopping for narcotics, and I saw this escalating behavior. We aren't naming the pilot in question, since he isn't facing any criminal charges. The union that represents him declined to comment, citing privacy concerns and multiple calls, texts, and emails to the pilot have gone unanswered. The FAA confirmed to Lincolns that they received received the hotline report the same day Lankins filed it. But then, radio silence. As a pilot himself, Lankins was able to navigate the system and try to get updates from officials at the FAA. I realized that this thing was still being shuffled around. They hadn't even decided which inspector or office was going to look at it. Um, and the pilot was still flying. It was the common dream of flying that had first brought the two together. We've had a long history in aviation and the military and being a shoulder for each other to lean on. But I think one of us chose one path and one of us chose the other. Lankins watched as that path led his friend into a career with Alaska Airlines, but also down a path of alleged drug use and addiction. Three weeks after filing the initial complaint with the FAA, Lankins was done waiting. And so I reached out and I contacted Alaska Airlines directly. I know the FAA had asked me in the first encounter if I'd notified Alaska. It sounded like they really didn't want me to. But more importantly to me was, is he still flying? Was he still flying? It's a question we've been trying to answer for weeks. We reached out to the FAA, but they don't track actual flights conducted by pilots. They leave that for the pilots themselves. Alaska Airlines most likely knows his flight history since they have to track his hours for regulatory compliance. But when we asked directly whether that pilot had flown during those three weeks, they declined to answer. 20 days after his initial report to the FAA, Lankins called Alaska Airlines customer service line, the same number used for changing a reservation, and shared his concern. Within hours, the pilot in question had been grounded. I mean, I felt like Alaska really responded uh, the way the FAA should have responded. They contacted me that night, let me know that the pilot had been grounded. Um, they reached out to me later, uh, letting me know that he was still grounded. I think that they had a very good intent and was actually very impressed with how Alaska handled things. Fox 12 reached out to both Alaska Airlines and the FAA with a detailed list of questions and a request for an interview. Both provided statements. An Alaska Airlines spokesperson wrote, We are aware of an allegation that has been made about one of our pilots. The safety and well-being of our guests and crew members are always our primary priority, and we take the allegation very seriously. They confirmed that an investigation was ongoing. A spokesperson for the FAA declined to answer specific questions about what actions were taken by the organization once the complaint was filed. 
They said in a statement, speaking generally and not in relation to any specific case, we take hotline reports very seriously and investigate every submission where the complaint provides sufficient information. Lankin shared texts and emails with Fox 12 showing his communication with officials at the FAA, indicating that an investigation had been started. Neither organization would provide information on whether the FAA had communicated with Alaska Airlines about the hotline complaint. And neither would clarify how many flights, if any, the pilot in question had flown between the time Lankin lodged his initial complaint with the FAA and when he was eventually grounded by Alaska Airlines. A report published earlier this year by the Department of Transportation Office of the Inspector General found that the office that runs the FAA hotline lacks comprehensive standard operating procedures. That same report found that just five staff members manage the approximately 3,000 FAA hotline complaints submitted each year. Lincoln says he has no regrets about blowing the whistle, but that it has been hard. I miss my friend, but there comes a point where a friendship compromises you two, and that's how I finally was beginning to feel. Lincoln says he hopes the investigation leads to the pilot getting the help he needs so he can get back to flying. There are still a lot of unanswered questions about how the FAA and the industry as a whole deals with whistleblower reports, especially in instances of urgent safety concerns. The FAA has announced plans to better support the mental health of pilots, specifically a committee design, desi designed to break down barriers that discourage pilots from reporting and seeking care for mental health issues. In studio, I'm Ezra Kaplan, Fox 12 Oregon. Boy, very eye-opening. Ezra, thank you.